Now, can you imagine being so inspired by Merseyside buses that you end up writing a musical about them? Well, that's exactly what has happened to my next guest, Ellie Harrison, an artist, public transport campaigner and creator of Bus Regulation. The musical says that she was inspired by Andrew Lloyd Webber's hit 80s musical Starlight Express. The 30-minute show is coming to the Blackie in Liverpool this weekend and it features performers on roller skates telling the history of public transport provision here on Merseyside from the post-war period up to the present day and it's going to look at the future as well and I'm going to give a big warm welcome to Ellie and say tickets please do they don't say that anymore do they Ellie I don't think so no they just say card now yeah swipe your card and sit down Uh, what a great story and you're talking to a bus queen myself my limousine is constantly Uh getting repaired the show sounds amazing ellie and it's quite niche isn't it tell us how did it all come together then i guess it is quite niche but it's a lot of fun and and i have staged it before and it's very been very popular with people of all ages um but yeah it, it really is inspired by a childhood memory that i have of going to see starlight express in the 1980s Um, and I was thinking about you know how I could visualize this really complex history of public transport and particularly like how the way the services that we use on our streets are affected by decisions that are made by politicians um, much higher up the pecking order and it's a very complicated story and the the idea the memory of Starlight Express popped into my head and I thought, well, that could be a really interesting, really visual, really fun way of, of bringing this history to life. Definitely. And it's also got, Ellie, a, a serious aim behind the story as well, because it's actually part of a campaign to bring buses into local control by the city region combined authority. Yeah, that's right. I'm collaborating with the Better Buses for Merseyside campaign. And there's a very important uh, public consultation happening this summer with the deadline of the 3rd of August, which is asking local people whether they support the combined authorities' proposals to re-regulate the buses, essentially. So to bring them back into the control of Mersey Travel. So Mersey Travel would plan and coordinate all of the bus routes and then they would be able to integrate buses with Mersey Rail and also with ferries um, to be able to deliver an integrated system. So it sounds like a great idea Um, and the musical really by showing the history of how buses have been run in the past and specifically the impact of deregulating buses in 1986, the impact that that had um on the ability of of Mersey travel like it could no longer basically control any of the bus services because they were all run by different private companies and all of that is acted out in the musical um with the performers on roller skates and I found that the roller skating is a really effective way of of um showing an audience you know what it looks like when the buses are all going round in a coordinated way or what it looks like when they're going around in a really chaotic way like they were um, after 1986 when so many new private bus companies just popped up all over the city and they were all competing with each other for passengers on the street. And I know you're hoping that the show fires up people's imaginations to think more about what they want from a bus service. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think that one reason I wanted to do this is because so many people rely on buses. You know, I think it's something like eight out of 10 journeys on public transport made in Merseyside are made on the bus. So there's a huge number of people using buses every day, but they just don't get the attention that they need, either by policymakers, politicians or in the media, um, arguably. So The musical is really aiming to turn that all around and to really celebrate the role that buses play in all of our lives, um, how they enable us to get around town and how they really need to be properly, properly planned, properly coordinated, properly governed, properly regulated in order to make them work in the interests of local people. Definitely, Ellie. And I know I am a bus fan. I love getting on. 
I love, I, I sit at the back, I have my own little set routine, bung on the headphones, check out the paper that's free. Loving the fact that it's the, the £2 rate at the moment. And you think, oh, I can go from A to B and isn't it wonderful? And I love the most about buses, people watching. What do you love about buses? <laughs> Well, there's lots of things I love about buses. I mean, one reason I got into public transport campaigning more than a decade ago is really because of the environmental benefit of using public transport. You know, we've got a climate emergency. We need to get more people out on the buses. Um, so we've got to make the services really affordable, really efficient, really reliable, so that more and more people start to use the bus. But absolutely, I love the fact that you you see you see people from all different walks of life on the bus. It's a real great um, place, melting pot, where people can come together. Um, but just in, in terms of the, the musical, what I hope that people will get out of coming to watch it is really, you know, people who grew up in Merseyside. I didn't, so I've learned all of the history recently by visiting the archives at the Central Library. I went through all the Merseyside passenger transport executive archives. I went to the Merseyside Transport Trust open day and saw all of the vintage buses and all of all of these things. But what I'm hoping is that people who grew up um, in Liverpool in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, they will see all of these different old bus companies, different coloured liveries from the past coming to life in the musical. So some of the, your listeners, I'm sure, will remember the green spiral that was emblazoned on all of the Merseyside passenger transport executive buses in the 70s. Well, that was quite a momentous moment in the musical when all of the all of the roller skaters are all wearing their beautiful Verona green capes to to bring the Merseyside um, transport buses back to life. Um, so. Yeah, there's there's lots in there. And for younger people, it's a great opportunity to learn that history because anyone that's been born in the 90s or, or the noughties or since then, you know, they won't know the history of, of bus deregulation and the impact that that had. And they may just assume that Arriva and Stagecoach always ran the buses in Merseyside, which definitely isn't the case. Definitely, because I was a Crosville girl, uh, Elliot, in my Aww. backstory. And, and two learning curves, you have to do the buses on a Sunday afternoon for those coming back from town after a sesh. And also evenings. I, I have great joy sometimes if I'm out uh, in Liverpool city centre and heading back home uh, to those uh, evening social gatherings on the bus, shall we say. Sometimes a little bit lively. But I wanted to ask about your campaigning side of things. Do you think you're going to have more impact with the musical as a campaigner for, for getting people to look at uh, uh, local control again by the, the city region combined authority, that rather than filling out forms, do you think you'll have more of a direct hit? Hopefully. I mean, we want people to fill out the forms as well because the consultation is running into until the 3rd of August. But the IJO stage in the musical now is obviously to create awareness for the fact the consultation is happening, um, to give people the opportunity to learn that history, to see that history visualised, to realise the impact of bus policy on the way that services actually are um, on the streets, and hopefully to inspire people to fill out the form um, and respond in, in favour of the proposals to re-regulate the buses. We're going to have forms available uh, for people to pick up after the show. But one really important point to make is that it's free to come along to the show. So if you're in any way inspired by um, anything that I said, then please do come down to Blackie on on um, Saturday afternoon. We've got two performances, one at two o'clock and one at 3.30. Um, you can book a ticket in advance on Eventbrite if you search for it. If you show up on the in, on the afternoon, we'll have a few spots for people who just walk up as well. So it's really not to be missed. I have been working on this, well, over a year now, not full time, but to, to bring it back to the Blackie um, on Saturday, I've been working on, on this since January. So, and there's, Loads of performers involved from the local roller derby league. So we've got um, Liverpool Rollerbirds and, and a couple of skaters from Wir Wirral Roller Derby as well. Um, so we have 10 people on skates. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a massive project to get everybody together, but I'm hoping it's going to be worth it. And yeah, please do come down and see it. 
Ellie, it's so lovely to talk to you. It's a real passion that you have for being inspired to come up with the musical. What do you love the most about it? Um, I actually, the music, I think, because I've just been uh, going over the script and everything this afternoon before I came on the call to you. And um, yeah, because it, it, it uses um, Andrew Lloyd Webber's tracks from Starlight Express which are incredibly catchy. Uh, so basically e each song um, is one decade. So it's very fast paced. As you said, it's only 30 minutes the whole show and that is 60 years of history. So each, each song is a decade and each decade's got a very different mood to it. But um, Andrew Lloyd Webber knows how to write a catchy, a catchy track. And there's a lot of drama. And there's a particularly famous song from um, Starlight Express called The Race. Um, and of, of course, I'm using Starlight Express because in Starlight Express, the characters are playing trains. But obviously, I've turned that on its head. And in, in bus regulation, the musical, they're playing buses. Um, but there's a famous track called The Race which is very fast paced. And I remember that song from when I was about five years old in the audience watching the musical and the roller skates are whizzing round and it's really exciting. Um, so I used that in the 1980s at the point when deregulation comes in and you get all of these new companies popping up and they're all in the musical companies like Fairway, Live Alone, Live Abbas, um, CMT of the Wirral, all of these like short lived new pri private bus companies that popped up, they all feature and they all go head to head with Mersey Bus and Crossville, who's in, in the musical. You'll be Yay. pleased to hear. Wonderful. And, and Northwestern, uh, which again only existed for around 10 years um, as well, but some people will remember that. That was based in Beetle. Ellie, you're my phone a friend next time I'm on He Wants to Be a Millionaire for being a bus queen more than me. <laughs> Ellie Harrison, a fab update. You are an artist, public transport campaigner, creator of Bus Regulation, the musical, on this Saturday at the Blackie. Just give us a, a direct link that's easy for our listener to find to book those tickets in advance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's simple. It's busregulation.eventbrite.com. Perfect. So all one word. Wonderful. Bus regulation. And there's yeah. two shows oh, as well. Right and it's 30 minutes. Go along if you are a fan of uh, and a user of public transport, especially buses. Ellie, what a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me on. Cheers.